Welcome back, everyone. We're ready for our next panel discussion. So far this morning, we've been quite focused on the Middle East as a market, and we're actually changing markets now. We're going to zoom in on Eastern Europe and the startup scene in Armenia and Ukraine. Uh, as always, remember to ask your questions in the comments. Uh, our speakers are really excited to answer them. Please take advantage of the, uh, the fact that this is a very interactive live session. So uh, ask your questions. Uh, the speakers we have for this panel are Feras Muzili, Managing Partner uh, at Lloyd and Muzili. And we also have Zoritza Brankovic. She's the research professor at the University of Belgrade. And to lead the conversation, uh, we have a, a comeback from Mohamed Sameh. He's an economist and international consultant, and he will be moderating this discussion. The floor is yours, Mohamed. Thank you so much, Melody. Merci beaucoup. So, like, just like, an, um, it's it's really, really, I'm honored to be here. It's such a pleasure to share such a panel with uh, Feroz and uh, Zoritza. Yeah, um, Welcome to the uh, to Visit Summit, uh, Firas and Zoris and everyone. Our, our pleasure. Good to see you again, Mohamed. Thank you. Um, we got the best uh, of the panel. We missed some of uh, the best uh, colleagues. Uh, we had um, invest in Armenia, and unfortunately, uh, they couldn't manage to, to join. Uh, they apologized this morning, and um, I invite everyone to look into invest in Armenia. They are doing wonderful things. And if anyone is interested, we can definitely connect them with the panelists. Um, we have also had Promilad from uh, Ivano Frankivsk in Ukraine. Uh, again, same story. Uh, they, but this time it's snow. Yeah, it seems there's a wind uh, and snowstorms in Western Ukraine. Uh, but we have the best with us. Serbia and Ukraine represented by Ferris Mosley. Uh, we have two diverse uh, type of uh, speakers today. Uh, but they share one common background, very strong academia. Feroz, um, you are today Fulbright professor in Kiev, and this is unusual. People are normally traveling from Ukraine, from Eastern Europe to the US as Fulbright students. Um, few people would know that it's actually an exchange program that allows professors from the US to travel abroad um, to work for knowledge transfer. So would you like to share with us what is going on? Absolutely. It's my pleasure to join you. Um, I am considered a specialist in intellectual property and technology law. And because of this, I have been tapped to serve as a visiting professor in Ukraine. I'm working with not only the universities um, in Ukraine, specifically in Kyiv, but also with the Ukrainian government. Uh, in supporting the Ukraine Startup Fund, as well as the technology ecosystem through Unit City and other tech incubators, as well as the AO incubator, to try to encourage development of technology and specifically moving past in IT, right, information technology to the creation of the wealth of intellectual property to raise the economy and the stature of the very, very talented uh, citizens of Ukraine to a global level. That's that's wonderful. For us, um, just like, uh, because we, we I used to live there, um, when you speak about intellectual property, and I, I, I saw your, I heard very well your question to Zarissa on the, just before we start, how do you feel the maturity of understanding of intellectual property and the needs to register and the needs to develop in Ukraine and Eastern Europe in general? I think it's still very nascent. It's something that the majority of the citizens just aren't familiar with. And unfortunately, even when they're thinking through intellectual property, they'll think of one of the several types um, and focus solely on that. So whenever we're talking about building a company and building a platform, we're thinking through the entire holistic view of intellectual property. And we'll talk, um, you know, with our, with our fellow panelists and some of the other sessions about the importance of building a brand in addition to doing your registrations for your trademarks, not only locally or nationally, but on a regional and international level. 
And um, unfortunately, I think just the maturity and sophistication of the legal systems there and people's general uh, resistance to relying on the government um, is one of the things that happens just culturally um, and um, encouraging folks to be thinking more broadly, more internationally, specifically whenever they have a platform that can be benefiting the rest of the world and how important a U.S. registration, for example, for a trademark or a service, in addition to patent applications, is critical to their future growth. Absolutely. And that takes us back to, to Serbia and relying on the government. I mean, uh, sorry to say, I wouldn't start with relying on the government, but I'll come back to it because it, it is definitely very critical. And uh, sorry to say, um, you started your life in research, academia, traveled between many countries, worked in Serbia, in the US, in Israel, and um, launched a, a Be Fresh, which is an awesome initiative in the agro um, field. And uh, would you like to share with us what is going on there? Yes. Oh, well, I'm also from Academy. So I'm research professor at uh, University of Belgrade at Institute for Multidisciplinary Research. I work at Material Science Department. And I'm also director of Center of Excellence for Green Technologies because at our institute, we are focused mostly on, on green technologies uh, and we are working not only what, uh, uh, with the invention that we had and about active packaging, but we also work on all other area like uh, renewable energy sources, like uh, uh, wastewater treatments and other technologies. But uh, recently, actually during 2018, we uh, had uh, we realized that at our institute we have one good invention that can be commercialized, and with help of the Innovation Fund of Republic of Serbia, we founded uh, our company. Few of us uh, are co-founders. We are all researchers from University of Belgrade, and that is a bit. That is how we started with uh, Be Fresh Technologies. That's the name of the company. And uh, our main product is actually in the field of uh, active packaging. We, are, we developed uh, uh, some new solution that should work to reduce food waste and uh, especially fresh fruits and vegetables. So the whole invention is actually a Be Fresh spray that is actually biopolymer polymer emulsion that contains some active components and uh, protect fresh fruits and uh, vegetables from rotting and spoilage. The main advantage of the product is that it's actually, we are not uh, uh, spraying uh, uh, food, we are spraying packaging. So it can be applied on any packaging materials such as cardboard, paper, uh, any glass, plastic. Wait, wait, wait a second, Zoris, a place, if you allow me. Are you saying that you're not spraying the fruits themselves, but you're yes. spraying the plate on which we you are put spraying the actually boxes? If you will have paper or cardboard or plastic box, we are spraying the boxes. So that is actually material that is in contact with with food, but uh, we are, it's not actually on the food. And according to the tests performed in, in certified laboratories and the, according to our accreditation, we we can prolong and up to 100% uh, uh, shelf life of fresh fruits and vegetables. So that, okay, that, it, that was the main I'm idea. The I'm not scientific, but let's put it very straight. So if I am, um, um, I'm Mohammed, and uh, I would like to have, like, you know, I live in Abu Dhabi, and I would like to have a very nice plate of fruits on the table, always welcoming uh, guests. Yeah. And you're telling me that I can buy this spray, just uh, put, literally spray the plate on which I'm putting the fruits, yes. And the fruits, yes, exactly. and they put the fruit in it, and it will stay uh, fresh 100% more, like practically yes. instead of four days, eight days. Well, up to 100. It depends on fruits. The best is uh, uh, if uh, fruits is really sensitive, like berries and uh, fruits like that, apricots, berries, peaches, that is actually 100% prolongation of shelf life. And uh, the best is that it can also be used on organically produced food. For organically produced food that they actually have the best needs and the, they their needs are really 
uh, big for products like this. So that was the main point. So we have actually a spin-off company from the University of Belgrade and uh, a company was uh, registered last year. And now we are in some uh, stage of uh, to increase our sell and sale and um, we have mostly marketing and sale activities in this stage. And we are ready to, to spread on the market, not uh, beyond Serbia. So we are interested in region and Europe mostly. And that is our story <laughs> about Be Fresh. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful story. Ferris, when, when, when you hear this, what, what questions come to your mind immediately? It's absolutely fascinating. So there's, um, as legal counsel, we try to think of ourselves not only within the realm of legal issues, but also partners for the business. So obviously, Theresa has thought through and filed registrations for her patents. I'm not sure which you know regions she's looked at, but we as counsel would probably end up recommending a filing national applications within the critical markets that she yes. would be targeting. So obviously within the EU and within the US being you know, some of the most significant markets that we'd be looking at. I'd be thinking through trademark registrations for the name, Be Fresh. Um, because she has a variation on the typical spelling, we may be able to overcome a descriptiveness objection. Um, but it's something that I think is critical to be able to identify something that is so unique, right? This is not a typical product or service that people oh, would, yeah. would be familiar with, right? If you were talking about uh, pesticides and other kind of glosses and other things that are typically applied to the products themselves, that's something that most people are familiar with. This is a novel concept, right? Applying yes. it to the packaging instead also has different ramifications from a business model standpoint. In my opinion, you know, you end up targeting and trying to enter into collaborations with the packaging manufacturers themselves. So it would be something different from maybe what you're envisioning, uh, Sameh, where it's a consumer sitting at home in Abu Dhabi or Dubai spraying their own <laughs> plate. What you would be thinking about is that entire transportation and supply yes. process. These are, this is our, our, yes, we are mainly focused on B2B, Absolutely. on supermarket chains, on, on, on retailers, but also small markets, green markets, and, uh, you know, all these exporters. Serbia is uh, really a, a large exporter of of fresh fruits, especially berries. So yeah. for exporters, it's also important. So this this is our, our our marketed customer, market targeted customers. But you know, we should not forget about uh, uh, consumers like Mohammed that <laughs> <laughs> likes to keep his <laughs> fruits fresh. We we should get them. <laughs> and, and I and I think what's also very interesting is that gap between what you were talking about, the, the, the suppliers for the yeah. packaging, et cetera, whenever you're talking about the actual farmers and other local markets, I think this, these are the people that will have the biggest impact Yes. Um, in terms of making sure that you can maintain the freshness of their produce so that they can be at a farmer's market longer and it may be yes. easier to end up entering into collaborations simply targeting farmers markets, providing it as a test, you know, and getting- Yes, that is our strategy actually. Yeah. Test strategy. samples, free test samples. That is our strategy. And I can tell you that uh, the most interest was shown actually with uh, producers, with the farmers. Yeah, exactly. they, are mo they were mostly interested up to now, they are, they are mostly interested group of, of people in Serbia, at least in Serbia, we will see. Well, one disclaimer, this is the first time that we are meeting Zarisa, so none of this is staged. This is all happening real and live time. So, yes. Um, this is the kind of brainstorming and thought process that goes yes, on. Yes, it's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 
And like, you know, I would like to two things before we say one, welcome Lyudmila Krejavonska from, from Reled, joining us from Ivano-Frankivsk. So that's awesome. We'll be moving to Ukraine. Ukraine is back. But uh, before we move on, uh, I would like to, you know, Zoris and Firas, since we touched on this, yesterday we had an amazing panel with the uh, Agro Fund um, from uh, Israel, and they are really looking into green investments. Uh, Ganit Veret was with us uh, yesterday on the panel. She might be hearing us in this very moment, but there are many other also um, funds looking into uh, agro food and you know agro investments, and they are working with the farmers all over the Middle East and North Africa. So as Firas was saying. Um, maybe we, we should not only stay local, or but we should go regional and international. And if I heard you very well, Zoris, you said you're actually focusing also on, on the Western Balkans area, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it would be very... Um, we, uh, in Scale Adventures, the, there's also a company, Kytozan, that is um, working on in a, a similar area. So I will use this word of uh, Feroz collaboration. It's fantastic. There are many people around that could be helpful. And uh, this is happening live, brainstorming together. That's awesome. Uh, let me move on to Ukraine, which is like, regardless of, and despite the storm, managed to join us. Thank you, Mila. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, today it's yeah extremely snowy in Ukraine, probably not as in Kair, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's still yeah. It it's, it's very not nice. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, it's very nice to join this event. Very nice, to, nice to join this panel. And actually, I was listening a bit on the backstage, colleagues. And uh, you know, it, it seems to me that we even now, even here in Ukraine, we find you know green energy, sustainable agriculture, and so on, very very in time. And we are trying to develop to okay maybe to support people who are working in this area in ukraine because actually maybe from Prilot is mostly you know about building an institution building a platform where such an initiatives uh, as uh, green innovations as i don't know makers product we, we have a lot of projects on the product design and we are trying to to create the in ukraine in even starting from ivana frankivsk actually but not just in ivana frankivsk to create a possibilities for people who will uh, um, have a chance to learn a bit more about the uh, innovations on the global level and then to integrate them to 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 implement them also here in ukraine sounds awesome and uh, you know for for those who have not yet been to ivano frankivsk and from Prilet, you would be walking literally in, in a city that is, you would arrive to Ukraine to leave most probably a beautiful city, yeah. travel to Ivan Prankivsk, and then you're walking between buildings, some of them old, some of them older, but some of them very authentic. And all of a sudden you arrive to this building, an old building factory, and you enter and you are literally in Copenhagen or in Sweden. How did you manage to do that? <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe I will step back a bit uh, for, for a bit to, to explain what we are doing. So uh, two years ago, we started the, almost three uh, actually years ago, we have started the project of revitalization of an old Soviet factory, which has a hundred years uh, of uh, uh, history. And it was a strategic plan for the city. So the city like was built around the plant but uh, it was producing the uh, things uh, for uh, which are not so they are not capable that they, they do not so we do not use it anymore the things which they produced and actually the plant was dying in the city center you know the huge part of the city center which was almost destroyed and now uh, what we have done we have started to revitalize the uh, uh, the plant and we are trying to you know on something which was innovative in its time I mean 100 years ago we are trying to create innovative center but which is uh, uh, 
adapt, ad adapted right uh, to the circumstances in which we are now. So that's why we are talking, I don't know, about green energy, about product design. And our model is an impact investment. Uh, we have already managed to uh, engage $10 million of investments. Uh, we have uh, like 70% of the project is commercial part and then 30% of the project is uh, an social uh, impact function. So we will have a lot of education there, uh, a lot of, I mean, for example, we will have the first inclusive gym in the city. Uh, we will have the uh, maker space, process, space where people will, uh, you know, have different uh, activities in producing things. We have innovative school, the ICD, and so on. Yeah. Mila, this is like, um, and I guess also music for, for us is, it's like, you know, this uh, mix of uh, social impact, 30% and investors, 70%, uh, and it is this, uh, let's say, 30% that allowed you also to access uh, grants from governments like Sweden, Canada, right? Which helped uh, staged the financing that allowed you later on to be uh, attractive for, uh, let's say, commercial businesses? Actually, you know, uh, for the uh, for all the social impact component, we are trying to engage uh, um, international and local funds as in, the, in terms of fundraising. And we are actually quite successful in that because we are already working, as you mentioned, with Canadian embassy, with Swedish embassy, with uh, EU now very actively and other org international organizations, actually to implement the social impact part. And then the idea is that we will start, to, so as soon as the project will be totally launched, in two years, the commercial part will help to sustain all the social impact part. So actually, we need we need some support now to to launch the social impact part. Yeah. So and we are really trying. Yeah. Look, looking forward. To, you know. Like Zorica, yeah. like you know, sharing the the journey of uh, from Prilad from Western Ukraine. Uh, what what would come to your mind? No, I'm. I'm really. That's so great to hear something like that. I. I would really adore to have something similar in Belgrade, <laughs> because. Oh, maybe to move to Belgrade. Let's move. Yes, actually, a lot of people now. Yeah. A lot of people now are moving to Ivana Frankivsk also because of Promprelot. And we are actually very interested to create, you know, the model which may be applicable for other cities. Yes. I mean, a lot of cities uh, in, in, our, in Eastern Europe, especially, but probably, I believe, not just in Eastern Europe, but, you know, we are may, maybe more connected here. But we have a, a lot of us have, you know, the, uh, um, in the, the past, which was uh, connected to the some produce, some factories and so on, which are not use, used now. So, yeah. For us, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, like you would have all the questions to make these guys there because, like, when I visited them, they were like expanding in every dimension. They're even going into food markets. They're, they have an entire wing that they're opening. In. And I wish Andrea Raska. I really wish that he, he was uh, is listening to us. Oh, I will send him the link for sure, because when you will travel to London, and uh, there were also like old newspaper. Um, printers like the, the our facilities that were abundant even in really in central London and they are now amazing vibrant hubs like Mercato Metropolitano and I'm not making any marketing of Mercato Metropolitano but like you really wish to visit and um, for us what would you ask immediately this uh, our lady from Ivana Frankowski? Uh, I, I love the innovation and I love the fact that you are bringing these different elements together uh, from different spheres. The questions that I would be asking are related to reproducibility, right? How can we end up taking a model that we've tested and seeing what can we end up providing in different locales? Obviously, there should always be a local flavor, 
right? And the integration of the local culture into any of these initiatives for it to actually take root and be successful. And I think that's part of this globalization effort. The recognition that yes, of course, there are some things that would carry over, um, but to be sensitive to kind of local considerations and making sure that people um, are connecting in the way that makes the most sense, right, for their customs and traditions as well. So um, those are the things that I would be thinking through. Spe specifically, I'd love to be able to see what that layout ends up looking like, how we're able to connect with the community and make sure that the community leaders, right, are involved and have a vested interest, you know, to, to play off the name of our summit here, in the success, right, of these types of ventures. So connecting, right, with the community specifically, those are the type of, of things that I'd wanna be able to understand. And frankly, the thing that most people may not um, appreciate is a formal agreement to either give back, right, or to have some financial incentive that's structured right, for the community to actually receive the benefit, rather than seeing someone who may be seen as interlopers, foreigners, you know, simply carpet baggers that are taking advantage um, of a area that may be economically depressed. How can you show that we are giving back, you know, to the local community and making sure that we raise the entire standards rather than just the pockets of some foreign investors. Um, please, leave me if you would allow me to come here. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, look kind of, yeah I'm very look thankful that you, uh, you Yeah, I'm very thankful uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, it's like, in, um, you know, for us, uh, the first time I, um, I visited and I talked with Ludmila's colleague, Ivan, and uh, he was uh, literally uh, saying that, you know, we were losing our colleagues uh, migrating from Ukraine to Poland and to the rest of uh, Central and Western Europe. And uh, well, the idea was like, what can we do so that we can keep our friends here? What can we do so that we can actually uh, make our, our community survive? And why not maybe those who have left to come back? And eventually, so if, uh, internationals could also come. But the idea behind it was actually not uh, from the beginning targeting international investors, but it was really uh, making a community that could act as a sort of a critical mass and interest for the people to stay. Um, did my understand correctly, Mila? Yes, I just not to take too much time, I'll just say to maybe three things. First one is that we are now became, we now became the platform for this city strategy development. So the city council came to us and said, okay, guys, we like what you do. Let's think together about the future of the city. It's the first thing. And the other one is that Ivana Frankiv, so you, Ukraine is probably as a lot of um, other countries are ranking the city for doing business, uh, like co comfort of the city for the citizens and so on. So Ivana Frankivsk, like four years ago, was on the 15th place in the doing business uh, ranking. And now it is first already the second year with you know the direct uh, uh, the, the direct also connection uh, people who because Forbes Ukraine is doing that ranking and they they see the direct connection with the prom prelate, which also is creating an opportunities for people inside the city. So actually, you know, a lot of companies now entering the city, so they are discovering it in some other way. And thanks for that, as uh, Mohammed have already mentioned, people are not leaving or people are back to the city, which is also interesting because I'm, I'm actually I'm not from Ivano-Frankivsk, I'm from Lviv. And I moved because of Prom Prelate. And, you know, half of our team, they are people who moved because of Prom Prelate. And also people from, from other companies. So they are coming because the ecosystem is, is actually changing a lot. So, and, you know, that this is Ivana Frankiv's community is, you know, our first customer for sure. <laughs> 
like I'm, I'm afraid we are running out of time, probably yeah. two minutes to, we we'll have to conclude. But, um, you know, uh, Zoris, uh, Firas, and uh, Mila, like the, around the world, um, we see uh, smaller cities losing, um, you know, stretched between losing its uh, younger people to them, uh, bigger cities. And, because, yes, and, you know, the demographics of those cities changing and reversing the trend uh, is extremely difficult. And it needed a certain holistic approaches and stuff, but all of this was academic. I know that you're both from academia, but to make it in practice is actually extremely difficult. And what we, uh, what those uh, gentlemen and ladies in Ivan Frankiewicz have been doing is trying with something like that, and they are succeeding, to reverse the trend of uh, out to come in, in a city that is not Kiev, is not Dnipro, is not Lviv, those would be very jealous but, uh, in the future, but uh, in, 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 let's say, um, a different layer of size of uh, tradition, and it's succeeding. So congratulations, everyone. That's, that's the power of technology and these connections that we're making, right? The fact that we're able to take this expertise and have people like Mila come in and be able to transform, you know, a local economy to the point where the city council ends up reaching out. Hopefully we can also be building bridges of internationally, course. right? Not only from uh, Lviv, Ivan Francesc, but from San Francisco right, from Austin, Texas, from London, right, from Berlin, these same connections, and hopefully, uh, you know, coming back, the Zarissa's, you know, incredible developments in terms of, you know, food preservation, these are things that should be presented immediately, right, to Silicon Valley venture capital, right, the kind of impact that we have on the global food supply chain, is undeniable, right? So these kind of local developments that are impacting the farmers and other uh, agriculture industry within the Balkans, um, you know, should be supported by Facebook and Apple and Google money, <laughs> right? Rather than just, uh, you know, connecting our, our, our phones and communications, but making sure that we have a very healthy economy and food supply. Yes. Now for the record, I gentlemen used to <laughs> advise. <laughs> uh, sorry, sir, for us. Thank you so much for this, uh, for sharing Thank those points. And um, uh, for both Doris and Mila, um, you are actually raising funds for their institutions. So for the public, please get in contact with us, get in contact with them. Um, there is a good opportunity there. And for us, uh, I can, I mean, I'm grateful always for these moments with you and friendship. Thank you, everyone. Melody, the floor is back to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you. It's so great to hear about all the innovation that is happening in Eastern Europe and to see the evolution of the startup ecosystem there. So thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and your experience. Uh, we have a... Uh, a futuristic panel session coming up where we're going to talk about the metaverse. So come back in just a few minutes. I'm going to um, leave you in the hands of the other editor of Value, uh, Amber Blouse. So she's coming in just a few minutes to take over as MC. And I hope you enjoy the rest of today's sessions. Thank you.